the arrow of time. Science can now trace a thread of understanding linking the origin and evolution of all things. That link is the concept of change through time. From galaxies to snowflakes, from stars and planets to life itself, we are beginning to identify an underlying pattern spanning all the natural sciences. A sweeping worldview of the order and structure in our richly endowed universe. As we look out into space, we look back into time. In this brief film, we take 12 billion years as the approximate age of the universe. Thus, we shall cover 1 billion years of cosmic time in each minute. Whatever time is and however it flows, we assume it to be linear, to move steadily from the beginning of all things to the present and beyond. In the beginning, there is nothing. By most accounts, the universe begins with a Big Bang. An explosion of something hot and dense, hotter than the cores of most stars, denser than the nucleus of any atom. Early in the universe, however, there are neither stars nor atoms. Radiation, the purest form of energy, dominates all. With time's passage, the universe changes rapidly. It expands, cools, and thins. Eventually, elementary particles, the building blocks of matter, begin clustering. As best we can tell, the youthful universe is both lumpy and stringy, filled with huge clouds of gas and great voids of emptiness. Somehow, galaxies emerge. They do so either when vast primordial clouds fragment to form a great many galaxies within large clusters, or they may form individually when smaller blobs of gas come together through gravity, making galaxies one at a time. Outstanding among the earliest cosmic structures are the quasars, energetic galaxies lighting up the far away and the long ago. Up close, quasars are the greatest powerhouses in the universe, sites of hot, fast-whirling accretion disks light years across. They are thought to house supermassive black holes. At the heart of the disk lurks the suspected hole, not itself lit up, rather it is the darkest of dark realms in the universe. As matter in the disk falls into the hole, energy is released, both from compressed gases in the surrounding disk and from great jets hurling matter and energy across thousands of light years. We are now three billion years into our story, and neither the Sun nor the Earth have yet formed. Astronomers once regarded the space between galaxies as utterly empty. We are now convinced there is much matter in the blackness of intergalactic space. This dark matter may affect the way galaxies evolve. The issue here is like that in biology. Do galaxies change because of some inherent property akin to genes, or do they change in response to their environment? Close encounters, collisions and other evolutionary events change the shapes of galaxies. From primitive structures in the earliest of times to the more familiar forms closer to us in space. Silently, majestically, galaxies twirl throughout the universe. One of these galaxies is our home in space. From the side, the Milky Way resembles a thin plane, 
rather like sombreros clapped brim to brim. But face on, our galaxy displays the full glory of one of nature's grandest achievements. The Milky Way is a typical spiral galaxy, spanning some hundred thousand light years and housing a hundred billion stars, more stars than people who have ever lived on Earth. Does the galaxy's mysterious core harbor a colossal black hole? Might our Milky Way be a version of a quasar, tamed by time? Does its halo hide dark matter in the volumes of space separating the globular star clusters? Galaxies may no longer form, but stars within them still do. Nebulae, the signposts of stellar birth, can be seen within the spiral arms. Dark interstellar clouds contract, heat up, and form these wispy, glowing regions. Across the nighttime sky, stars pass through their evolutionary cycles. Compact blue stars bright with youth. Bloated red stars dim and near death. And myriad yellow-white stars burning sedately at middle age. Like galaxies throughout the universe, the Milky Way resembles a galactic ecosystem, full of change everywhere, with its evolutionary balance as complex as that of life in a tide pool or a tropical rainforest. Now, halfway across the arrow of time, our sun and its planets are still not formed. The heavy elements needed for planets must first be made in erstwhile stars. Hydrogen changes to helium, helium to carbon, carbon to oxygen, all the way to iron and beyond. The coins in our pockets, the air we breathe, indeed life itself, are all made of elements forged in the hearts of stars. Most important are the massive stars that end their lives as supernovae, blasting debris back into space. The end products of stellar evolution are bizarre. Ashen white dwarfs, left at the cores of spent red giants. Neutron stars, the pulsing remnants of catastrophic explosions. And, perhaps, black holes, the ultimate stellar death. Some seven billion years into our 12 billion year scenario, the sun emerges in the suburbs of the Milky Way. Our sun is an average star, average in mass, size, and energy output, destined to endure for billions of years. Beyond our newborn star swirls loose matter not fallen into the sun. This leftover matter gradually forms a disk, which in turn fragments into roundish blobs. These are the protoplanets, large and gaseous in the cool regions far from the sun, small and rocky closer in. Planets are natural byproducts of the star birth process we know of only a handful in our cosmic neighborhood. One of those planets is our home in space, Earth. At first, Earth is barren, hot and lifeless a hostile place. Its atmosphere thin and volatile, its surface bombarded with comets and asteroids, its interior molten and churning. Continents drift, mountains rise and volcanoes outgas. Gradually, Earth cools and calms. Change remains a hallmark, a constant. And from that change, at first in warm little ponds, comes life. Some nine billion years across the arrow of time, primitive life maintains a fragile existence. These are unicellular microbes, barely managing to photosynthesize.
The details of life's origin is as sketchy as that of galaxies. How life originates is not well known. However life came to be, the chemical evolution that preceded it gave way to a more familiar kind of change, biological evolution. Life survives by replicating itself countless times on a microscopic scale. It does so by using surprisingly elegant ingenuity. A mere 21 amino acids make up all of life's proteins. And only four nucleotides comprise the coiled strands of the hereditary molecules of life's genetic code, DNA. In man, mouse, or microbe, genes mastermind life and proteins maintain its well-being. But even at 11 billion years into our story, no plants yet adorn the landscape, no animals yet crawl from the sea, and humans are nowhere to be seen. Earth's atmosphere now thickens. The ozone layer forms. The sun's penetrating radiation is weakened, and the unicells invent specialization. Hardly 5% of our story remains the last half billion years or so. The pace of change quickens, yielding ever more complex life forms. Of foremost importance, life leaves its watery home and comes ashore. During the past few hundred million years, life manages to survive, prosper, and populate nearly every nook and cranny of our planet. Our ancestral hominids do not emerge in this 12-minute film until the last second. Homo sapiens appears within the last one-tenth of the final second. Without a brain's small seed of consciousness, Galaxies would simply twirl and stars would shine all along the arrow of time, but nothing could comprehend the majesty of it. With a brain, we probe the past, striving to understand who we are, where we come from, and how we fit into the cosmic scheme of things. <laughs>